Okay, so today's video is going to be breaking down the process of installing and blending extensions. Step number one for any blonde is usually purple shampooing or toning the extensions, so that is what I am doing here. We are installing two full bundles of Hand Tied Wes, and we are using colors Mariah and Jordan. So we used Vanilla No Yellow shampoo on them, and then we are going to try them and install. Okay, so I got Jessie a birthday present. Um, I told her happy birthday like a week in advance, so I'm already like ahead of the game. So I'm gonna give her a birthday present early too. Um, I made this for her, it says Killer Queen. And I did this because we both love the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. And then on the sleeve, where is it? I tried to copy her little crown tattoo. So yeah, we're gonna go give it to her. I'm so excited. She made it. She embroidered it herself. Yeah, you embroider? Well, I used to work uh, in a place that does it. And then what? on the, I don't know if it's this thing or the other one. Oh. I tried to copy your little crown tattoo. <gasps> oh, Isn't that the cutest cry. thing ever you've ever I seen? I'm gonna cry. Don't cry. Oh my gosh. Wait, gonna... that is like the nicest thing you've ever, like anyone's ever done for me. Thank You're you. Welcome. That is hilarious <laughs> right now. That is cute. Oh, oh my gosh. Killer thank you. Queen. That's, That's killer so queen. Cute. I totally talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Look at that. Oh, I just had to throw that clip in there because I love our receptionist Asia so much. She's so thoughtful and I love her. Okay, so the extensions are all dry now. We have everything laid out on our tray. These are all the tools we need to install and we are going to start putting them in. For this client, I actually did six rows. Her hair has a little bit of breakage and it's a little bit shorter and she wanted to take a break from color. So we are just doing extensions today, but I wanted to do two full bags just because she does want that fullness and length. So I'm starting off by doing a mini row down here and then I'm going to work my way up the head doing horseshoe rows and mini rows to give her fullness all over. I'm mainly going to be talking about what I'm doing and kind of going over the process of installing and blending extensions without really showing too much. A, because I already have a few videos that go over the install process, and B, I do teach classes certifying stylists in this method, and I do believe that it's fair to them if I don't show too much since they pay for classes. If you are interested in taking any of my classes to learn extensions, I will link them all in the description box below. After the beaded track is done, we sew the hair on. I am just using one bundle on this row since it is a mini row and I'm doubling it twice. I would say the hardest thing about hand tides is that you have to double them, fold them over, stitch them in. You can't actually cut the top of the track like you can with a machine weft, but they do lay a lot flatter so most clients like them a lot. I always use these little metal clips. They're kind of like the pin curl clips we used to use back in hair school. And I put one on each side horizontally and then one vertically up the middle so that everything stays tight and in place while I am sewing. Okay, so now I'm on her second row. As you can see, this one's a little bit bigger and it's curved more in like a horseshoe. As we get onto the bigger rows, I like to do the horseshoe shape because it does follow the shape of the head and it lays really naturally. So I did one mini row underneath on her and then I did two big horseshoes and then I did three mini rows. So we had six rows total. When it comes to blending hair extensions, you have to be very careful and you have to do it a certain way. You don't necessarily wanna go in and blunt cut the bottom. You don't wanna go in and do a 90 degree haircut like you would in hair school. It's all about movement and making it look really natural with the client's own hair. So point cutting, texturizing, slide cutting are your three best friends when it comes to blending extensions. I always do the baseline very first and then I fine tune everything after that. I let the client look at the baseline before I move on to make sure that we're heading in the right direction and it's the right 
length, but point cutting is really a, um, a helpful tool when you are blending extensions because extensions are so thick most of the time that if you do a blunt cut, it can look a little too fake and heavy at the ends. And then as you can see here, I'm just kind of slide cutting throughout her hair. I usually like to end it um, where her client, the client's hair ends and then just kind of go down from there. So you can kind of pull it out in a pie shaped section, shake the hair and then just slide down from there. So there's no real rhyme or reason. It's more just doing what looks best with the client's natural hair without cutting into their own hair. If you ever need to cut the client's natural hair to do this process, make sure you ask them and get permission first. And the best way to do that is to point cut with texturizing shears to kind of break up the blunt line. And then texturizing around the face like this is honestly the most important part because this is visually what the client sees and it's kind of a drop off if it um, is their own hair and then the extension hair so you might want to make sure that it looks really natural in the front and like I said I use a lot of slide cutting point cutting texturizing and you can't go wrong with all three of those. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video thank you so much for watching have a great day